Hey guys, welcome back to the Overland Bootcamp series. So in this series, we talk to experts about specific things you need to know. It's raw and uncut, and the reason is because the most important thing is getting the information to you. So we'll be talking about things ranging from trauma care, trail repair, electrical, and we're super fortunate to have Chris today, and today he's gonna to talk about very basic wound care. So without further ado, let's check in with Chris. If you happen to be a renowned expert in some overland related field, please write an email to michael at overlandbound.com and maybe you can be featured in a future video. All right, you guys, let's get to it. Hey everyone, it's Chris, overlandbound.md here again uh, to do another quick session. Today we're gonna do a wound care session, just how to take care of basic wounds. I'm again on call, so I think I'll just start calling these on call with Chris and we can all learn a little something in between uh, cases for me. Um, I did that live session on Instagram. A lot of people enjoyed it. They got a lot, had a lot of questions and they asked for uh, more. So I'm just going to basically repeat that one and put it up on a more permanent basis. So the wounds we're going to talk about today are your basically everyday campground, base camp kind of wounds. I'm not talking about traumatic where you've fallen and rolled down a hill and you need to get your trauma kit out. I'm talking in a controlled environment. You know what's going on, the person's awake and alert, they just have a cut, some kind of wound like this right here. Um, this is on a hip, so I like using this mannequin because it's not an area where you can talk about tourniquets and elevation and things like that. And that's not the kind of wound I want to address today. I want to address just a deep cut, something that needs first aid, not trauma care, first aid stuff. So. You're at camp, somebody gets hurt, obviously do your quick scene assessment, make sure that there's nothing that's gonna hurt anybody else. But for this video, we're talking about what do you do once you realize everything is safe and now you have a cut to deal with. Um, number one is you're gonna to have to wash this out, okay? When we talk about washing it out, there's hydrogen peroxide, sterile water. Do you need hydrogen peroxide? No, the recommendations are don't use it. It's bad for the healthy tissues. Do you need to lug around a bunch of sterile water? Absolutely not. This is just basically a waste of space. Uh, if it's water that you will drink, that's considered clean enough to wash a wound out. You don't need a fancy irrigation, syringe, or system. Water bottle, squirt it on there. If you need to, punch some holes in the cap of the water bottle, and that gives you kind of some pressure to blow out the debris that may be in there. Wash it out with a fair amount of water. Let's just call it a liter. Um, and then you're ready to go. Now, before you do all this, make sure you get your gloves on, personal protective gear, eyes, uh, protection is also very good, especially if you're gonna be irrigating a wound and having splashing coming out at you. But um, you've now washed it, what do you need to do? What do you use? Okay, so for a wound that is not bleeding, it's not actively squirting, um, you just need regular gauze, to be honest. I like Curlex, it's rolled gauze. You just unroll it, you pressure it in. It's, uh, all it does is it creates pressure inside. This is pretty much what you would do, the same thing if it was bleeding in an area you can put a tourniquet on as well as hold pressure. The gauze, as you pack it in, actually creates a lot of pressure and will stop most bleeding. And you just keep packing and packing and shoving it in until there's no more that can go in. What I like about the Curlex is I can leave it right on top as a pressure dressing. And then you just take your tape and tape it down as tight as you can. Um, I'll warn you, the tape doesn't stick to this mannequin very well. But you put your tape on, pressure dressing, hold it down, and that's it. That's done. That wound is now packed and dressed. Um, if you're on a multi-day trip and you need to, you can't get home for whatever reason, whether you're hiking or you need, you just can't, then you need to be able to change this every day. If you have limited supplies, once you're done packing it, you can just cut the Curlex and keep it for the next day. When you take the Curlex out, I suggest uh, the old Curlex, toss that, wash out the wound again, put in some more Curlex. If you don't have Curlex or you find that you like the gauze better, uh, the four by four as they're called, you can do the same thing. You take a four by four and you just shove it into the wound and you keep packing it into the wound until that wound is packed. And then again, you apply your tape for your pressure dressing on top, you can take a few of these as well, fold them up, stick them down, again, tape it down, 
and all you're doing is applying pressure at that point as well. Um, if you have quick clot and the wound is oozing a little bit, quick clot is a uh, gauze that's impregnated with kaolin. It's an excellent product. I do, this is a training module, that's why it's blue. Uh, you can get it in a roll or in a Z fold, which is a kind of like an accordion. I like the Z fold because it's easier to just pack. You just sort of take it off and pack and it really shoves down in there. Um, they're expensive, so you may not want to use it on a wound that doesn't have a lot of bleeding, um, or you may say that I'm going to use it because I have it. The secret really is just applying pressure. Pack it in as hard as you can, just push and push and push, and then pressure dressing on top of that. Now, if you've packed a wound and it's bled through the wound, people want to say that you got to leave those dressings in place because you, they don't want you to remove the clot that forms. There is some truth to that, uh, but to be honest, if it's bled into the gauze, all the clotting is on the gauze and that's not actually gonna help you down in there. Uh, you can reinforce it, put another dressing on top, hold more pressure if you need to just take your hand and push, hold pressure. Uh, if the gauze that's deep inside is saturated and the, blood, uh, the gauze on top is saturated, you can absolutely take the gauze that's on top off and put more gauze on and hold pressure. To be honest, all that does is kind of get between you and the pressure point. So I just recommend direct pressure as hard as you can. If you need to drop a knee onto this area, drop a knee onto this area. It's really just holding pressure. Um, but for the wounds that we're talking about that aren't bleeding, this one's about an inch deep. You saw I was able to get a lot of gauze in there and uh, that's pretty much it. Simple wound care. So uh, if you have questions, I'm Elsa Lee on the Overland Bound Forum. You can find me on Instagram at overlandbound.md. Happy to answer questions. And if you have suggestions for on call with Chris topics, let me know and I'll uh, shoot some video uh, when I'm working. Hope everyone has a good day. Be safe.